Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design a steel structure in STAD Pro for both strength and serviceability requirements. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on specifying the serviceability limit states for our particular model. Now to start that process, we do need to tell STAD Pro which load combinations to include for the serviceability step. To do that, we're going to create a load envelope. To start this process, select the loading tab in your workflow page control area. And we're going to go to the load envelopes section and click on the add button. Here in this dialog, we're going to tell the program that we are creating a load envelope for serviceability. And we're going to select all our appropriate serviceability load combinations. Here in the selected window, I can review all the load combinations that I selected and then click the add button. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click close. So here I have two different load envelopes. The reason for that is because for this particular model, I'm investigating both strength and serviceability. So I have a load envelope that represents my strength load combinations and one that represents my serviceability. Now, in addition to creating your load envelope, you also need to tell the program which load envelope to use for the upcoming commands. To do that, select your Analysis and Design tab in your ribbon toolbar and click on your load list icon. Here, we're gonna tell the program to select a load envelope and we're going to select load envelope number two. Let's move that over to the selected area and click OK. Now what a load list command does for you is it basically tells the program to use that load envelope for the subsequent commands or parameters that we're going to be adding next and it'll do that until you specify a new load list command. It's a way basically of controlling which load combinations to use for which design checks. Now once we've specified our load list envelope command we're ready to specify our design parameters for our serviceability checks. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about serviceability and the design parameters that would be appropriate for a serviceability check in STAD Pro. Now in STAD Pro, whenever you perform any type of analysis or design, you can always receive information about nodal deflections or relative beam deflections in the post processor. So that's available always. But if you want to specify your deflection limits as basically a limit state, um, so to ask the program to check the deflection of members against an allowable deflection, then you're going to have to start with this workflow. Now to specify whether or not you want the deflection limits to be used as a limit state, you're going to use the DFF parameter. This is basically your deflection length over your maximum allowable local deflection. Now, in addition to that, you may also need to specify your DJ1 and your DJ2 parameters. And this is especially important when you have a physical member that's been divided into separate analytical members for the modeling process in the STAD Pro analytical modeler. What these parameters do is it goes ahead and tells the program what the length of a particular member is in the event that the length of the analytical member does not represent the full length of your physical member. In the absence of the DJ1 or DJ2 parameters, the program will automatically use the overall length of the analytical members. So let's go ahead and take a look at that for our particular sample model. Now we're going to decide which members we want to check for deflection. And for my particular model, I'm going to go ahead and check this area, which is basically my upper platform for deflection. I'm going to assume the rest of the model. I don't need to specify those types of parameters. 
So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to again start by selecting my current code. I'm going to stick with the AISE 36016 specification. And then let's go to define parameters. I'm going to start with my DFF parameter. This is our deflection length over the maximum allowable local deflection. In addition to that, I'm going to see this note. So deflection is zero, which indicates that deflection check is not performed. So the default is that we're not performing a deflection check as a limit state unless you specify otherwise. So for my particular model, I'm gonna assume that the members at this level should be checked for an L over 240. So I'm gonna enter 240 into this field, click the add button and then close. Then I'm gonna go ahead and assign this to the members in my model for which it's appropriate. I'm gonna highlight that specification and I can either use my cursor or one of my selection parameters. Now for this particular model, I went ahead and assigned everything at that upper level as a roof beam. So I can use a group assignment, select to assign beams and click the assign button. Now that we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this upper roof level. Now, what I'm gonna notice is that several of the members, say this one, for example, does represent the overall length of the member. So I don't actually need to take that extra step for this particular member to specify the DJ1 and the DJ2 parameter. But for the girders in this model, let's go ahead and highlight one of them. This member in the field is going to be constructed from column to column. Due to our modeling requirements in STAD Pro, this physical member has been broken into three separate analytical members. So what I need to do is I need to do, take the extra step of specifying the DJ1 and the DJ2 parameters so that the program can figure out the length of this member. It'll basically calculate the distance between the starting node and the ending node. And that's your L, your L over 240 for this particular example. To make this process easier, let's go ahead and turn on our node numbers. To do that quickly with your hotkey, you can select Shift N while in the main window, and I'll be able to see all of my node numbers. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and specify our DJ1 and DJ2, and I'm gonna specify it separately for each of these girder members. To start this process, let's go ahead and click on the Define Parameters button, and let's start with all of our DJ1 parameters. For the first particular member, this is starting from node number nine. You can see that right here. We'll go ahead and click the Add button, DJ19 has been added, and then we can continue on for whatever other members this would be required for. Once we've specified all the starting nodes of our girders in this particular model, let's move on to the ending nodes for the DJ2 parameter. Our first member finishes at node number 10. So let's go ahead and enter that information there and we'll see that available in the steel design dialog. We're gonna continue this process for the rest of the girders for which this is necessary. Once we are done, we're ready to go ahead and close this dialog and then we will have to assign these parameters to the appropriate members in our model. To do that, you're gonna highlight your parameter and then select your appropriate members.
Now the last step in our workflow is to go ahead and invoke a design command. Each of your parameter folders within your steel design dialog should have a design command associated with it and that's what's going to instruct the program to go ahead and use that folder in your design process. So to start that process, let's go to the Steel Design dialog and click on the Commands option. Here we're going to select a Code Check command, which instructs STAD Pro to check whether the provided section properties of the member are adequate. Let's go ahead and click the Add button and then click Close. And then we're going to assign this design command to all the members where we're asking for a deflection check. At this point, we'll go ahead and save our model. And in our workflow, we're ready to go ahead and move on to the analysis and design phase. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.